I always want you when I'm coming down. Yo, I've been wanting to make this video for quite some time because I think it's gonna serve three purposes. If you're someone like me who is like a diehard weekend fan, I'm talking about like all the way back before he was even the weekend when it was like just XO, XXXO, like on his on his page, before the first mixtape even dropped, when he was just in secrecy. So this is gonna serve like a trip down memory lane for us. But secondly, a lot of people that like the weekend now they're maybe not so die hard or maybe they maybe they are die hard but they didn't understand where he came from or they didn't see the rise to fame that we saw at the very beginning like we got we like we were we found a diamond in the rough we were right there ready to buy an IPO of a blue chip stock basically so I hope this video serves as some type of like imagine imagine going through this with the die hard exo fan back at the very beginning and third and most important or maybe not most importantly but I feel like the weekend still has a stick around him and a lot of people don't like his music or they just don't get it because they don't understand like like they hear the, they hear the lyrics about the drug use they hear the lyrics about misogyny and using women and and very dark sound and and it leaves a bad taste in their mouth because they're looking at it at a very surface level so hopefully if you clicked on this because you're a fan of me even if you're not necessarily a fan of the weekend you can gain some appreciation for his for his lyrics and his musicality because it's the closest thing to genius that that anyone's gotten in, in R&B in quite some time. Finding The weekend before the fame, finding The weekend before the mixtapes, even finding him during the mixtape days was crazy. I credit myself with finding two artists, two artists before most people ever knew that they existed, one of them being The weekend and the other one being Drake. And finding Drake was dope. I mean, you could tell that the dude was gonna be a star all the way back in Degrassi days when he was wheelchair Jimmy. Jimmy the boy said, my, mom, my mama always told me what to do with my best foot, so to to this day you know that it is never behind when i heard that i was like this dude's a star it was so different with the weekend it was so mysterious like he didn't he didn't ever show his face all of his music that he had put online it was always some type of like abstract black and white photography with with women like in in lingerie or women like laying down or just like just like the house of balloons mixtape cover is that's how it was. I remember thinking this is so calculated. This is so dope. The aesthetic of, of everything that he's releasing, the the mis the shroud and mystery and darkness, and then his music matches that. Remember, this wasn't this was before Apple Music. You had to search, you had to hunt for these mixtapes. So like when you found the mixtape and you hear it for the first time, you're like, damn, man, this this dude is gonna be a star. He was gonna be a star because his voice, while it was so it was so like rough at the time, I guess you could say, like he hadn't honed his craft of singing and vocals, you can hear, you can hear the potential of who he could be. Obviously, his whole aura, his whole, his whole aesthetic is completely different than Michael, but vocally, him and Bruno Mars are gonna be the closest thing that we get to Michael Jackson. So here you have this super angelic, super effortless voice within Abel, and then he put and then he puts it on top of very dark instrumentation. And, and he's talking about things that R&B had never talked about at that point before. R&B was not as dark as it is. Like, like he changed the landscape single-handedly of the way R&B sounds. The level of eeriness, how dark it is, how, how mysterious it is, how like nightmarish sounding and dreamy sounding it is all at the same time. It was never done before. Sean C, I'm sure a lot of people know who he is, another re another review YouTube channel who does reviews. He made a video similar to this one on his channel and he said at at that point when this music came out, like no one was no one was owning up to the drug usage. No one was talking about that in the same way. Not even not even rappers, not R&B artists, so he literally pioneered that. And I have to agree with him on that because I can't even think back in recent memory or even, you know, 15, 20 years before that with like the, the superstars of R&B, they just didn't talk about those kind of things. So then The Weeknd comes out with, with his mixtape, House of Balloons, and the first track is high for this. You don't know what's in store, but you know what you here for. This song, the fact that he led the mixtape with this song, and it's so dark, and it's so eerie, and it's so like, what am I doing here? Like, it sounds like he's leading you on, and he's pulling you in, like you're his prey. Like, you don't know what's in store, but you know what you're here for. You you know exactly why you're here. So don't try to pretend like you don't. And then when the beat drops in this track for the first time, this is the first instrumentation that drops, our first very look into the mind and into the art of the weekend. This Listen to this. Imagine hearing this for the first time in 2011. Oh. Open your hands. Take a 
Bro, it's almost like this song is like the prologue to the entire journey that is The weekend's music and career. He's talking to the girl in the song, obviously, like she wants to live the life. She wants to rebel a little bit from her parents, but he's like, he's like luring her in and she's starting to get a little bit scared. He like, he's not even gonna let her, give her the chance to change her mind and escape from the life that he's trying to pull her into. And that's almost exactly what it was like at the time hearing this, it's almost like like he's warning us like he's luring us in like you have never been down that the R&B has never been down this road before I'm gonna lead you there I'm gonna keep you safe through this journey but keep in your mind and be aware that you have never been down a journey like this before so imagine hearing this whenever whenever the weekend was nobody you you find the allure of the weekend you find you find his his mysterious presence interesting you know it kind of grabs your attention and then this is the first official song that you hear on the mixtape and this is our first listen into the first track of what eventually is the weekend's entire career. Cause I know what you're feeling, baby, breathe. I swear I'm right here. Promise will be so good, bro. I got you in my hands. I'm gonna keep you safe on this ride. Bro, go back in your life to 2011. Imagine the soundscape of music at that time. Imagine what R&B sounded like. Usher's are like kind of on top of the game. Uh, Trey Songs is on top of the game. And then this motherfucker comes in. They're all talking about pulling these bitches and being in love and, and, and I'm sorry I did you dirty. And then this motherfucker comes in with this. So then after we open up with this dark and sinister sounding and he's, uh, and he's luring this chick in like, like a mouse, like he, like he, she is his prey. She's never lived a party life. He's like, I got you. I'm going to show you you what this is like and i know you're scared because you should be after that we get into the next track which is very angelic in what you need he ain't gotta go nowhere does he touch you here like this right here i'm the drug in your veins just fight through the pain he's what you want so we have the first track, right? And this song sounds like if we went carried along in that storyline, to me, this song sounds like like they are both high at this point. Like the beat is slower. It's nowhere near as dark or as crisp. It sounds like it's kind of floating, very angelic. His voice is like in the background, kind of kind of distorted a little bit. And what's crazy about the hook of this song to me, he's like, he's what you want, he's what you want, he's what you want, I'm what you need. It just reminds me so much of, of After Hours on the track when he's like, you don't, like, like he's hypnotizing her. Like you don't love him, you're just fucking. That means nothing to me. You don't love, like you know, you know the track. I'm, I think it's the interlude. I forget the name of it. And when it comes to the lyrics that he writes, it's just the, it's just the not asking for forgiveness nature of the song. Like this is the life that I live. This is what this is the only thing that I know. So if I'm luring bitches in, or if I'm breaking hearts, or if my life isn't isn't what you would normally expect, I don't give a fuck. And he shows no remorse for it. And and he's and he's just using these women, or he's using this girl specifically specifically for sex. He doesn't want anything else to do with her. I do everything he does times three. And I don't give a damn. Shorty, watch me knock your boots off. Ain't no What you I'm the drug in your veins, just fight through the pain. He's like, there is an upside to this. It doesn't seem like there is right now. Fight through the pain, fight through the heart racing, fight through everything that, that you don't wanna have a bad trip off the drugs. So don't have a bad trip off of me. Fight through that pain, fight through the urges to, to stay loyal and, and because I promise I'll make it worth it. You'll be high off of this. And a lot of people at this point, I feel like they think like, especially the people that say all he does is talk about party music and drugs. And at this point, two tracks into the song, I. 
I can understand why people feel like that. That's what it is on the surface level. But if you look deeper, it's more like he. this is the only life that he knows. Is he associating the feelings of being high and using these women for sex with the feelings of being in love? And then we go into the next track, which is very signature weekend, having two songs or two, like part one, part two in the same track, House of Balloons and Glass Table Girls. And it's in this moment and in this song when you're realizing, I even think Sean C said it in his video, but this is when you realize like it almost sounds like the chorus of the hook is trying to convince yourself that you're having a great time you see how it's much happier the beat it sounds like we just entered the party everybody's having a good time you know the drugs are there the music's vibing like we're just we're having a great time you're in my world now that no right there bro i don't know if you can hear it because of the way we're playing the music but after he says you belong to me it has like that like note down that note puts you in your place in the song just like the line itself puts you in your place You hear how it sounds like, like it sounds like he's trying to convince the person that he brought and he's trying to convince himself that they're having a great time here. You want to leave, but you can't go. And then, and then just like the, just like the chanting nature of just the hypnotic, this is a happy home. We're happy here in this happy house. This is fun. Like, like they're, like they're trying to tell themselves, this is all right. We're fine. This is fun. When really in actuality, it's not. So after you hear that and after you hear like how sad and vulnerable after hours, is you go back and you call back to this album where it sounded like he was having a great time and then you hear a song like this and you're like oh maybe he wasn't maybe everything is just is just smoke and mirrors maybe it's a disguise that he puts on to show that he's not vulnerable when deep down he's extremely vulnerable you hear that last slide Every time that note hits in the back right before the hook comes in, it brings you back down in the reality of the situation. Like at first he's like, have a good time here, you but you belong to me, remember that? And then that note hits and right here he's saying, don't blame it on me that you didn't make it home. Like, don't blame it on me that you wanted to party. At the end of the day, he might have been ultra persuasive about coming here and now she doesn't want to be here. But at the end of the day, it was her decision. And what's crazy about this song is that this is kind of like the first track that we get where the weekend does like the 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 A side and the B side or movement one and move it two, whatever you call it in one track it stands out so much the beat gets instantly darker as if like she's not happy here he's not happy here but he's already accepted the fact that this is his life even if he's not happy he's not going back and because he's accepted that it's no longer very angelic up top it's not talking about it's not the smoke and mirrors that the first half of the track is that's stripped away and now we only have the darkness of the life that he lives so we're having a great time right convincing ourselves it's fun Ooh. The tone of his voice matches the darkness and the eeriness of the of the beat on this part of the song. We know that it's not the smoke and mirrors. We pulled back the curtain, take a look, and this is actually what's happening on the inside. Two puffs to the lady who be down for that. Whatever, together, bring the whole stash of the greatest. Train it with a handful of pills, no chasers. And it's half past six. We pass, cause time don't exist. And we can test out the tables. You hear how dark the his life that he lives is? We're still at the same party, but it is no longer the fun party that it once was. It's this place that no one really wants to be. All right, so we're three tracks into the mixtape. At this point, we our emotions have been everywhere. It was very dark. Maybe I don't want to go down this path, but this guy, The weekend, is saying that I'm going to be safe with him, so we ride down the path with him. And then the next track, we're high already, and he's trying to convince us that he's what we need. So then we get to the house party, we get to the party, and everybody's trying to convince themselves that they're having a good time. This is a happy house. We're happy here. This is fun, right? This is fun. This is fun for me. And then after that, we strip away that, like, that, that atmosphere. We strip away that facade that the party is, and we get down to the core nature of it in the second half of that song. 
song and it's dark once again and, and once again like this is not a place that we probably want to be your average person doesn't want to be in this situation but this is his life every single day and then after that we float back up one more time with the morning Pains from the tenants We can not let's say you with our cereal for breakfast Make that money rain I say taking off their clothes Cali is the mission Close doors, they get pulled So the mission All that money The money is for me just imagine these visuals I'm about to give you. Close your eyes and imagine the music video. There's trash everywhere. There's bitches just asleep on the couches together, sofa together, probably naked. He's eating cereal and drinking Alizé in the morning. It's just like this song when you realize that he's just a kid. Like his priorities are still the same priorities as someone who's 20, 21 would have. Like money is the motive. Like I have nothing else going on in my life other than parting. I don't give a damn about these women. I don't know what love is. I don't want love. If if love is this, then I'm in love. And all, all I care is about making this music and getting to the bag and getting the money. The mission has always been to get to Cali. And that's why that's why the song Escape from LA off of After Hours hits so hard for people who are diehard Weekend fans when this mixtape dropped because he's been talking about it for 10 years, talking about LA's the mission. And then all of a sudden, 10 years later, he's like, I gotta get the hell out of here. And it's crazy because in that song or in After Hours, he's seen through the facade of, of the lights and the glitz and the glam that LA is. So the album so far at this point is high for this. We went down into the into the depths and the darkness. He's gonna protect us. This is, we, we swore we wanted this, so we gotta, we can't back out on our word, but I'm actually getting a little scared and nervous and timid because of how dark it is down here and then we get the high of what you need and it's just like we're floating up here but we're not exactly all the way back up and then we have house of balloons that the first half brings us back up and like oh okay this is what i signed up for you know everybody's fun everybody's having everybody's having a good time and then we get into the second half of house of balloons in the glass table girls and it's like oh it's it's still a dark place through the facade of house of balloons the core of everything that is here in this mixtape is still a very dark place so then after the darkness and the sun start coming up in the morning and then and then the energy of the mixtape starts floating again with the morning and then we get into basically what is the first single that that the world sees and it's like and it's pushed out there as a single which is Wicked Games. And in Wicked Games, we're still, we're, we're still a little atmospheric. Don't exactly know what's going on. I left my girl back home. I don't love her no more. Bring your love, baby. I can bring my shame. Ooh, right here. I got my heart right here. I got my scars right here. This song is like high for this part too. He is now showing, he's now talking about how he is a broken person deep down. He has scars and he has fears and, and like all of that, but he's doing it in a way where it doesn't sound like it lacks confidence. It sounds like this is who I am and I know that you come from a broken place too or else you wouldn't wanna be here. And if you wanna come with me, you gotta accept it. I'm not changed. This is who I am. And at the end of the day, of course you're gonna accept it because you want the fame. Because you wouldn't be talking to me if you were a normal, regular girl who wanted a, a picket fence and you and you wanted a you wanted a golden retriever with the Jeep and you wanted the family with the two kids. You don't want that life. So stop trying to pretend like you do want that life, that you're scared of this life, because it's either that life or it's this life when you come with me. I know you want the fame and you'll and you'll do whatever it takes to get it. So that means you're gonna be doing drugs. Drugs, you're gonna be fucking, you're gonna you're gonna basically be used, and you're gonna be cool with that if you wanna come. God, give me all for this. I need confidence in myself. So tell me you love me. And this is kind of the first look into like him being a fan of strip clubs and strippers. He's like, I'll give you all of me. I'll give you all of this. I just need like show me. I need confidence in myself. And you bring me that confidence in me, even if it costs, even if it costs physical dollars, because you make me feel like I'm loved. You make me feel like like you want me. Tell me you love me, even though you don't love me. Again, this is him being lost in the world, being confused about the fact that he doesn't know how to love. Instead of trying to fix that, he tries to put a Band-Aid on it with strippers and with going into false and fake love. And, 
and everything that revolves around around that part of that life as well. So again, a lot of people that don't understand the weekend's lyrics, they think that it's all party music and it's all drugs and misogyny. It's it is that, but it's only that because he doesn't know any different. If you're in that life because that's what you've chosen, that's different. But if you're in that life because it chose you, that that's what we have with the weekend. Let me see you dance. Take you down another level. Get you dancing with the devil I got my heart right here oh, I got my scars right here Bring the drugs so I can mask my pain with sex with you and with the drugs that you prov you are my drug to mask the pain that I don't want to face. And what's crazy about this song, again, going to like, what, this is 2011? So like 2017, 2018, when My Dear Melancholy was released, he's basically saying, tell me you love me even though you don't love me. Like, I want to hear that. And then in Call Out My Name, he's like, call out my name and I want you to stay even though you don't want me. Like, it's the same, it's almost the same same exact line but with two separate different meanings like this line over here and call out my name is heartbreak like he is now admitting to the fact that he was defeated by a woman where over here he's saying I need I need you to say that you love me even though you don't love me so I, I could take my uh, my mind off the defeat of my life up until this point because life has defeated me that's why I indulge in all these vices that I do such a crazy song bro and again like if you see it on the surface level all you see is him being misogynistic you see him you see him cheating on his chick like it, it seems very on the surface it seems very shallow but that's because that's the way he wants you to see it he wants you to see it as shallow this whole mixtape is a roller coaster ride of being down in this darkest part of life like when you're up here when you're a regular person yeah you got your lows even when at your lowest low it's gonna even out with the highest high and you're gonna break even for most of your life if you're a normal person you're gonna be you're gonna be content with life but when you are living in the darker deeper recesses of your mind and the and the and the trauma that you experience and you're trying to hide it with this life that he's talking about like at the end of the day you're down here all you started down here these highs and lows you're you're starting down here and you go up and down much greater but you still level out down here because you haven't fixed any of the underlying issues so the whole mixtape has been like that and here we go back up with the party and the after party the next track you're a big girl and it's your world and i'm gonna let you do it how you want it now right but when he says you're a big girl and it's your world, again, we're floating up here, like we're on the high. But then when he says that, boom, the 808 hits and it's like, oh, just a quick reminder. And then we go back to being up here. When you're Louis V bag, tats on your arms, high heel shoes make you six feet tall. Everybody wants them, you can have them all. But I got what you need. Take the off Have a room, I swear no one will interfere. See how again, like we're floating up here. We're having a great time with the woman. Like, like, bro, I promise no one will interfere. We're just having a good time racing each other around the house all fucked up high. He's not allowing himself to open up to potentially get hurt because that's what these women do that he hangs out with. They hurt guys. They stampede all over dudes their entire life because they're hot and all they care about is the superficiality. So they eat them up and spit them out and he's not gonna allow himself to be that. So he's gonna be a step, the next step up. I got you girl, oh I got it girl. Messing up your carpet, I'll get on it after four. Should've fucking rolled. Can't believe I made it, but I made it, that's for sure. This part of the song sounds like the high is there. All the activities, they fucked or they did whatever they did. And now it's just like, like they're calming down. He's not coming down. He just reached a, a, a sustained level of just like, all right, I'm looking around, taking in, and taking in my surroundings. My obsessions are just thrown on the floor, probably talking about pills and drugs. And then he says, I should have fucking rolled. And now that the endorphins are crashing, like, does he feel like a sense of reality check? But he also at the same time says, like, I can't believe I made it, but I made it. That's for sure. 
like looking around at everything that he has. Like, look at my life. Who wouldn't want this? I've made it. I can't believe I made it. I made it out of where I came from, but I made it for sure. And at this point, he hadn't even made anything. This is the first mixtape. And he goes on to say, like, she's not looking for that unconditional love. So I'm not trying to give her that. What the fuck are these bitches on? They want what I'm sitting on. They want the throne. They want they want to be at top of the mountain. They don't want my love. They just want my potential. Could you imagine having to like feel like that about every single woman that approaches you? Do they actually want want me or do they want my potential and because I don't know I got to keep my guard up completely and I've never known anything but my guard up so this is the way that I live they don't want my love they just want my potential got a brand new girl call her Rudolph she's probably OD before I show her to mama the ringtone no silence mama please stop calling just the darkness of the second half of the song like like i said the high of like everything the party the high and then then you're sitting there and it's like not coming down but just the you're looking at your surroundings and you're like i don't think i could trust any of these bitches in this room right here including the dudes and these bitches are only here they're using me for the party life i got a new girl i call her rudolph because her nose is red from all the cocaine she'll actually probably overdose before i even get to show her to my mom so after all of that again another track that has a high moment and a low moment of realization then we come to the next track which is actually literally quite literally the come down and it's this track it's this track when you're like oh the come down is actually difficult and while he's living this entire party life while he's while he's out you know being like fucking all these women doing all these drugs at the end of the day he only wants the one person when he's coming down <laughs> That I can only say one thing Girl, I'll be bad again When I fade, I forget Forget what you mean to me Hope you know what you mean to me The party's finished and I want you to know I always want you when I'm coming down So you hear like how we go from the party and then the after party, when we're like lingering still, the party atmosphere is still there, but we're kind of coming down a little bit. And then we come down again to the come, literally the come down. I hope you know how much you mean to me because I'm never going to be able to articulate it and express it to you because that's just not who I am. But I hope you know that me wanting you on the come down, that's the only way that I know how to show that I love you. Do you hear like the toxicity? And do you hear how that's like a terrible thing? Again, people are going to see the surface, the, the superficiality. They're going to see the surface level of the party in the music because he's doing it intentionally because he has his guard up that he has the guard up and he tries to live up here and live that fast life so that way in his mind he doesn't think about the fact that he's broken inside to the point where he can't even tell this girl what she means to him he just has to hope that she knows and and she has to read into the fact that because he wants her only her when he's coming down that that's his way of saying that he loves her hear how he's like I pop it again like pop the pills again I tried to quit but I don't know how to quit like like another another hint at the fact that he doesn't want this life like I'm lying to myself about the fact that I like this life well I'm lying to myself and to you but but mostly to me but actually mostly lying to you when you listen back to the entire mixtape with that mindset now that this isn't a life that he likes it puts a whole different type of emotion that you feel on the mixtape because you're like damn he's caught in this life that he doesn't like to live so now the super Superficial lyrics no longer seem superficial. It seems like he's hiding something. He's hiding his true self through all the partying and all the drugs because that's actually what it was. The piano notes in the back, like literally they're cascading down just like his emotional state, just like the high, it's cascading downward. <laughs> And then once again, the album, the mixtape takes us back upward because, you know, we're back, we, we, we're back at it again. Oh, oh. So baby, take your clothes off, a chance like this, you ain't never get to show off, show off, Just show off what you're talking about, but write it out now, I know you want to scream, baby. You just hear it. 
you hear like the pressure that he's putting on these women to show him a good time using these women listen to how he manipulates their mind and listen to how he's like taking advantage of their mental state to get them to do what he wants he says baby take your clothes off because you may never get another chance like this to get to show off what you're talking about like you're like you're talking a big game like you like you're gonna fuck my brains out unless you like to tease baby but actually in reality i just think that you don't know how to please you, you hear how he's kind of like i don't know if it's quote unquote gaslighting but it's definitely manipulation saying like have sex with me unless you're all just about unless you're just all talk and if you are all talk you're not even i don't even think you're necessarily a tease i just think that you you don't know how to please me Cause I don't play unless it's keys and i play all day you lost your morals, girl But it's okay Cause we don't need them When we're going in there to fall off Baby, it's okay We can do it in the living room you see how like he's just fucking with these women who are just as superficial and just as lost and just as damaged and trying to hide all of that damage with parting and parting with him while he's trying to hide all of his damage by parting with them. Again, all on the surface, I could definitely understand how one might hear this and be like this. I'm, I'm turned off to this because it's party music unless you know everything that's deep down underneath. That's when you realize that it's more than that. So now we're up. And obviously, if we go based off the pattern of the mixtape, we got to go down one last time. And it's this track when you realize that The weekend is numb. He's numb to the life that he lives. And he's numb to the fact that he's never going to know anything other than the superficiality. He's never going to get deep enough with anybody. He has his guard up to allow them to hurt him. And that's when you realize, like, damn, this is... This is a sad life. It is low key, one of his best songs that he's ever made. This whole song is about the fact that he knows. He knows who he is and he's accepted that life. He knows that what this chick did, she thought that she was gonna break his heart in the same way that he broke her heart, but it's not possible because his heart isn't there to break. This is the end of the mixtape, the original mixtape back in January or February of 2011. I know. most sinister line oh, like i know i know what you did and baby it's okay it's okay that you cheated on me you are never gonna be able to hurt me in the way that i can hurt you so i'm gonna let you taste her i'm not washing my sins i'm not washing away the adultery that i committed he's literally talking about the fact that he had sex with somebody else to to get revenge on the fact that this chick had sex with somebody else to get revenge on him but he doubles he doubles down on it he has sex and then has sex with her so he, so she can taste the girl that he cheated on her with like, do you hear how like dark that entire that the entire thing is? And at the end of the day, he's like, this doesn't even hurt. This doesn't even phase me, baby. I'm OK. The guard is so far up and the defense is so far up that if somebody tries to hurt him, he just turns right around and hurts them worse. That is a very sad life to be living. And the pre-chorus going into the chorus, it's hard to understand. So I'll read the lines after we hear it. But it's so it's it's so manipulative. Hide all the We try to hide it all behind a smile, but baby, take a look at what you did. Like you tried to fuck me over and you got hurt. Look at what you did. Like I didn't do this to you. You did it to yourself. That is such a manipulative line, bro. And it doesn't even stop there. He says, you probably thought that you would break my heart and you would make me cry. But I didn't because baby, it's OK. I know everything. I know everything that you've done. And you're about to learn that I did it back to you in the worst possible way. But baby, it's okay. I swear it's all the same. I know everything. And it's one of those like we're never gonna get this weekend back. We're ne he's never gonna be able to be this experimental and this dark with his music ever again. And it might not even be that he can't do that because the label doesn't want that type of like crazy misogyny and crazy lyrics like this but he's not that person anymore he's not that cold heart he's been hurt he's shown his vulnerable side so this clearly is all this clearly is all a mask and a facade and this song is probably the strongest mask out of all of them y'all think i can hit this note right here <laughs> probably not <laughs>
Definitely was flat. <laughs> Do you hear these lyrics, bro? Like they're just going through the motions in this relationship because they both hurt each other. He says these tongues don't twist like they did before. Like we don't kiss in the same way that we did before. You're trying to keep it up. Like you're trying to keep me up during six, sex, but I don't feel that same way about you anymore because you're a fucking dirty bitch. And you're dry because you know that I fucked you over. Like you can't even get wet like at the thought of me. So intercourse is impossible. And it don't even hurt. It don't even hurt to know that this is the life that they live right now. That's the crazy part. The more Do you just see how sad, how sad that song is? It's just cloaked in sadness and depression. Even the instrumental sounds sad and depressing. And, and in the song, it don't even phase me in the way that you thought it would. I'm sad even just listening to the song. And he's like, I'm so numb to this. I'm so closed off. This doesn't even hurt me. But deep down, it does. Crazy tape, bro. This is the first introduction into the weekend, an official mixtape. At this point, we still don't even know who he is. We got introduced to this artist who is changing the sound of R&B single-handedly, and we have no idea who he is. Could you imagine being alive and and finding out about this at that time? Everybody that found the weekend after Kissland, from Beauty Behind the Madness to Starboy to to My Dear Melancholy and After Hours. Imagine finding that at a more, much rawer, much darker version, and you had no idea who this kid was. That's basically what this mixtape is. The entire mixtape is just one big facade, one big facade to hide the person that that After Hours is talking about, to hide the scars and hide the memories and high and just cloak everything in party life. But deep down. It is not about the party life. It is superficial on purpose. It's about hiding the scars. It's about hiding the pain. It's about being numb to everything that, that potentially can hurt you and numbing it through the party life, through the misogyny, through the using women, through the, through the drugs, through the alcohol. It's about the party life, but it's not about the party life at all. This video was mad long, so anybody that made it to this point, I appreciate it. I'm probably thinking about doing every single mixtape just in the same long format fashion. So let me know if that's something that y'all guys would enjoy because I don't think that this is the best mixtape of the three, but it definitely has importance because this, this introduced us introduced us into the artist that Abel is and it was the very first glimpse of the soundscape of all R&B changing because of this one person who we had no idea who he was. But I appreciate it if you made it this far. If you did, leave a comment that says like, I made it to the end or something. If you wanna support me, if you like the video, please consider liking the video, leaving a comment down below and subscribing, especially if you wanna see more weekend things. And I appreciate everybody's time. And like I always say at the end of all of my videos, go out there in the world, love and care for one another and each other. And I'll catch everybody on the next video. Peace.